So I'm back again in the studio and today I want to talk about building beats. Now, when it comes to music production courses, a lot of them focus on building beats using individual one shot drum samples. So individual kicks, claps, hi-hats, snares and building your grooves that way. Now that works really good if you want to be very precise and you have an idea for the groove that you want to. But what if you don't have any ideas at all or what if you really struggle to get that same kind of groove? I come from a sampling background, so when I'm building my beats, I tend to use drum loops quite a bit, I cut them up, and that's how I build my grooves. And in a live stream recently, I started using top loops to build my beats, and a few people are a bit confused about how I do that and why I do that. So I thought I'd make this quick video showing you how I build my beats with top loops. So today's video is all about building beats with top loops and I do this quite a lot when I'm actually making my tracks and for a whole load of different reasons but probably the main one is the fact that it's just so quick to get an idea going. When I open up Ableton I want to get those beats flowing as quickly as possible so I can then start getting melodies in there and vocals and other samples in there. So I just want to get my drums down very quickly, sketch them down and get the idea flowing. Now when it comes to using individual drum hits, which is what a lot of courses teach, it can be very frustrating sometimes when you're going through snare after snare or clap after clap. It can take some time to kind of figure out the exact sound that you want and also the exact pattern that you want because sometimes Sometimes I don't know the kind of approach that I want for a track when I first open Ableton. So using those top loops can really help inspire me and get an idea going. Now, if you haven't heard of top loops before, it is pretty much what you would think it is. It is all the top elements of your drums. So you're talking claps, hi-hats, snares maybe some light percussion. It's all the stuff without any kind of bottom presence. And that's generally how I build my beats up. So let's jump into Ableton and I'll show you how I would build a beat up using top sloops. So I've got a brand new project here and I've really stripped this back because I want to show you just how I build my drums. Now the first thing I usually always have in is my kick and it's always on a MIDI channel because I will go through a whole project and then I might even change that kick at the end. So having it all as MIDI really helps me do that. And this is just a very simple 4-4 kick pattern. Nothing amazing there. And I've just got it going over eight bars. That's usually the length that I usually build my drums up over just so I can get some variation in there. So I have my kick within there. And the next thing I do is I start to then layer drums in over the top. So as I mentioned, I use top loops quite a bit and you can find them in most sample packs. So I've got this sample pack here, the Sample Magic White Label, 90s Deep House and Garage Pack. And in here we have a drum loops folder. Underneath that, we have a couple of subfolders in here for different BPM. I'm gonna open up the 128 BPM, and then we can see all of our loops within here. Now, if you have a decent sample pack, you'll find that when you go into your drum loops, that you will have all your different drum loops within it, and then variation on those drum loops. So we can see here that we have one drum loop here called 1K, and it actually comes in several different variations. So you have the full loop, which actually contains all of the drums. And then you have a hat loop. So that's just all the hats. And then a percussion loop, which just contains all the percussions. And then you have this kind of stripped out loop, which has the kick and the clap. And then finally you have the tops loop. So this top loop contains the hats, the claps, the percussion, and it really kind of gives you a groove. So it kind of gives you all of the elements of the drum, but without that big kick in the background. Now this becomes really handy if you're trying to get that certain kind of groove because you can go through these top loops and find the groove that you want to. If you'll notice next to every one of these top loops, I've actually got a color next to it. Now this is actually putting it into my collections. So I have a collection up here for tops loops and I have these all collected together. So I go through every sample pack that I download and I will actually put them all into my tops collection. So every tops loop I'll put into my tops collection. This just allows me to go through all of my tops loops and really find the one that I want to. So as you can see within my tops collection, we have that 1K loop sitting within here. 
And of course, one of the best features of Ableton is the fact that I can be playing this kickback and actually audition top loops over the top of this to kind of figure out what kind of groove that I want. So as you can hear, it's a really good way to kind of audition grooves, kind of get an idea for where you want to go for with the track. But I'm not actually going to use that whole top loop. What I'm listening out for is just certain elements within that top loop. So say, for example, with this top loop, I might just really like the hi-hat. Now, what can I do if I just like the hi-hat from that top loop? Well, because I have the full sample pack here, I can right click on it and go to show in places. This will then take me to the actual sample pack that that top loop comes from. And as you can see earlier, as I showed you, we have all these different elements. So what I can actually do instead of actually using that top loop, I could just pull out the hat loop. And then I could put that into my track. So I've now got my kick and my hi-hat in there. I've got some kind of groove going, but next I wanna get a clap in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my tops loops again, and I'm gonna start auditioning these top loops again. But what I'm actually doing is I'm actually gonna be listening out for a clap. So whilst I'm hearing the whole top loop, so everything involved with that, the hi-hat, the percussion, the clap, what I'm listening out for is just the clap. So even though I'm auditioning the whole loop on top, and it might start to sound a bit cluttered or a bit phasey because I'm playing two hi-hats at the same time, what I'm actually listening out for is that clap. So I'm really liking the clap within that loop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on that loop and I'm gonna to go to show in places. Now, this has actually come from Splice. So I haven't actually downloaded all the rest of these drum loops. So all I actually have is the top loop. I don't actually have the clap or the hi-hats. Now I could go ahead and I could go and download that from Splice. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to actually get that clap out of the top loop without having the other samples. So sometimes you will just have that tops loop and you won't have all the other elements. So this is where we're gonna get in and we're gonna start editing it. So I'm gonna drag and drop this top loop onto my project and I'm gonna loop it over those eight bars. And now what we wanna do is we actually wanna get just the clap out of here. Now there's a couple of different ways that we can actually isolate this clap. So we have the clap just on its own. But the first thing we need to do is we actually need to find where that clap is the cleanest. So we need to zoom in and figure out which clap is probably gonna be our cleanest. So there's not other stuff happening at the same time. We don't want any kind of percussion or hi-hats playing at the same time as that clap because we want it as clean as possible. So just looking at the waveform, I can see the clap is there and that's probably the cleanest one because there's stuff all around this clap here and there's not really that much going around on around this clap here. So I'm gonna use this one as an example. So as I say, there's two different ways that we can go ahead and do this. The first one is just cutting up the sample. So I can zoom right into this clap and what I can do is I could put a cut here, for example, just before the clap, not exactly on the clap because we want a little bit of, a little bit of room before the clap just in case there's anything just before the beat. And then we wanna get a little bit after as well. So I'm gonna cut it around about here, for example. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna delete this part and I'm gonna delete this part. So we just got the clap all on its own. And I'm gonna solo this just so we can hear the clap on its own. Now we can hear that we have some kind of shaker going on here at the end. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna trim it in a little bit. 
So whilst there is a clap, there's also a shaker or a triangle or something playing at the same time. But I think that actually might give us a nice kind of texture within this. Now, what I'm actually going to do just to make sure that that sample hasn't got any kind of rough edges, I'm actually going to use the fades at the end here. If you're not used the fades before, these little kind of squares here allow you to draw fades in at the start. So it fades the start of the sample in and we can do the same thing at the end as well. You don't want to fade too much. You don't want to be kind of affecting the sound too much, but where you can see that there's nothing going on we can put these little fades in just to make sure that there's no kind of nasty harsh edges so you can see there we now have our clap i'm going to zoom back out of here so we now just have a single clap, but we need to fill up the rest of these eight bars with those claps. We just don't want one on its own. So what I could do is I could actually click and drag this, holding down the Alt key to copy it across and copy it across to where the next clap would be. Because this is house, we got a four, four pattern. So the clap is always on the two and the four. So one, two, three, four. Now this of course can be really tricky. If we zoom in, we can see that this isn't quite on the grid. So when we start dragging and dropping this clap, it's gonna be quite hard to get it on time. And we might actually not align it quite right to the grid. So say for example, if I just dropped it on here, it wouldn't be in time. You can hear that it's just slightly out and that's just because I put it straight on the grid where it wasn't quite on the grid. It should have been about here. So how can we stop this from happening when we come to copying our beats? Well, I'm gonna get rid of this one for now because what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create a two beat loop. Because we have our clap on the second beat, what we can do is create a two beat loop and just loop that up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create a loop within here. So I'm selecting two beats worth of region. So we're actually just selecting these two beats here. So you got one, two kicks, and we can see that the clap happens on the second kick here. So what I'm doing is I'm actually just select this region here, which is a two beat loop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on here and go to consolidate. This will make a brand new region within here. And this is gonna be so much easier for us to just copy across. As you can see, it's gonna keep within time. Now, of course, I can copy this across, but we have the amazing loop feature within Ableton. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this clip and then I'm going to activate loop within here. And this just allows us to then loop up this clip. So I'm going to drag it back to the start. Close down this window. And then loop it all the way to the end of the eight bars. And then we now have our clap within there. Now, as I mentioned, there are two ways of doing this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of that loop so I can show you the second way of doing it. So if I load that tops loop back in here again, the one that we started with, I'm gonna stretch that out to the eight bars, close down the browser for now, just zoom this out and just make this track a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. So I just wanna take a quick second away just to say a big thank you to my brand new Patreons. If you haven't seen it yet, I've just launched a brand new Patreon page where I'm giving away my effects, my presets, my templates, and a whole load more. So I just wanna say a big thank you to my brand new Patreons. Femi, Joseph, Mark, Steve, Nicholas, and Toby. I wanna to say a big thank you to you guys for backing me on there. You're the reason that I'm gonna be able to do more content on this channel. So I really appreciate your support. And if you wanna get hold of my presets, my templates, plates and a whole load more, then definitely check out my Patreon page. Now, the second way of doing this actually involves going into the clip itself. So I'm going to double click to go into this clip. And again, we're going to start by trying to find the cleanest clap within that loop. So as we saw before, this is probably the cleanest clap within that loop. So this is the one that I'm going to use. And I'm almost doing it in the reverse way this time, because the first thing I want to do is I actually want to loop it up over two beats again, but I'm actually going to do it within the clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this area here, which is two beats worth, and I'm actually going to right click on here and go to loop selection. You can use this shortcut key, which is Apple L to do this. And that'll just loop this region here. So what I'm doing is I'm just looping up a smaller part of that bigger loop. So you can see here, we're actually just looping up this small section of this bigger loop.
Now, obviously, we have a whole load of stuff going on within here. So what we need to do is we actually need to trim this up again. Now, before where we kind of cut out this clap, we're going to do the same thing, but we're actually going to do it with automation. Now, you can actually do automation on a clip within here. You just click on this little icon here, and then it opens up the automation tab. Now, there's a whole lot of things you can automate within the clip, but the thing we want to automate is the volume. So if you go to clip, and then choose volume from this list here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna automate the volume. And what we want is we actually just wanna solo that clap on its own. So we can see that the automation is within here. At the moment, it's at 100%, so it's 100% volume. And what we wanna do is we just wanna isolate this individual clap within here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put a point just at the start of this clap, just roughly about here. I'm being really, really kind of rough about this. We'll tweak this a little bit later. And then I'm gonna put another point here. And then we those that that's almost like the start of the clap and that's almost like the end of the clap. And then next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another point just after that last point and drag it down to 0% volume. And we're going to put a little bit of a fade on here. And then I'm also going to do the same thing before the first point as well. So as you can see here, we're actually automating the volume. So at the moment it's zero volume and then it gets to this point here and it goes up to 100% volume and then back down to 0% volume after that clap hits. Now, the reason I put the angles on these automation envelopes is because I wanna do exactly the same thing we did with the fade. So I'm actually kind of just fading it in quite gently. So the fact that we're not actually getting any kind of nasty clipping on the edge. What I could do is I could actually have it like straight like this. So it actually goes from 0% volume to 100% volume in just one go, but we're probably gonna get some kind of clipping and it's it's not going to sound very good. So that's why I've got a little bit of a fade happening. And if we solo this, we can hear how the clap sounds on its own. Now, what we could do is actually zoom in and actually get this a little bit closer. So I could maybe bring this 100% right as close to the sample as we need to. And then I'm going to bring this fade in as well. So it's just a really kind of short fade in. And at the end, I can actually just adjust the fade out to be whatever we want it to be. Sometimes you might want it to be a bit longer and a bit shorter. It's totally up to you. You kind of play around with whatever sample that you're using. So if I zoom back on this clip, we can see that it is just soloing that individual clap. But if I close this down, you can actually see that that top loop still looks like it has all the other stuff in there. So it still looks like it has the hi-hats in there that it had before we did the volume envelope. What I can do to get rid of this if I wanted to is right click on here and go to consolidate. This will make a brand new loop containing just that clap. So basically what we've done is we've committed that volume envelope. So if I click into this clip now, we don't have any volume automation going on within here because what we've done is basically we've committed it to a brand new file. So we've kind of rendered it out basically. So we basically just have a brand new loop within here, which is just the clap. Now, consolidating it like this is definitely an optional step. You don't have to do this. And there are pros and cons to doing it. Now, the pros, obviously, for doing this is the fact that it becomes a whole lot cleaner. You can actually see that loop now only contains that clap. There's no kind of junk in there that's actually muted, but is showing within the waveform within here. So it does look a lot cleaner. And if you're looking at this a bit later, it does make more sense. But say, for example, you come to it a bit later and you actually really want the hi-hat from that loop. Maybe you like the clap and you actually want to bring that hi-hat back. Well, if we click into this clip, we can see that hi-hat is no longer in here. So if we wanted to bring that hi-hat back, we'd have to search up for that loop again and bring it back in again. Now, if I undo this consolidation, so it goes back to how it was before, so if I did want to bring this hi-hat back in again, what I could do is just select the envelope that I have within here, which is actually muting everything and just delete it. And that would bring those hi-hats back in again. But the trade-off is obviously the fact that we have these hi-hats muted with the envelope, but we're still seeing them within the clip. So it just looks a little bit messier. However, one really kind of cool feature within here is the fact that because we're still using this top loop, it's still the original top loop. We're just muting parts of it. We can actually get back to the original top loop within here very, very quickly. If you go over to the sample part here, I can actually just click on the title here and it will take me back to the original sample within my browser, which can be really handy, especially especially if you want to get to other parts of that sample pack and maybe get other bits from that sample. So which way do I prefer? Well, I probably use the envelope way 
the most. That's probably the easiest way for me to do it because you can really play around with that envelope until you get the result that you want to. When you're cutting stuff up on the timeline, sometimes it can be a bit of a pain. And as you can see there, when it comes to making loops and stuff and getting them in time, it can be a little bit tricky. So using the envelopes can work really, really well, but I don't keep myself to doing it just one way. Sometimes I do like to kind of get down and dirty and start editing within the arrangement. It really depends on the sample and how I'm feeling on the day. There's no bad way to do it. It's whichever way you kind of feel the best way of doing it. So we've now got a kick in there. We have a hi-hat and we have our clap. So next up, I'm gonna look at getting some percussion in there. And again, I'm gonna dive into my tops loops and I'm gonna go through some of these and try and figure out some other percussion. So I'm really liking the closed hat within this loop. And even though I've already got a hi-hat within my project, I kind of want to add this in there to see if this would kind of layer nicely with the other one. So I'm going to drag and drop this into my project and I'm going to loop it up over those eight bars. I'm also going to solo it as well. Just make it a little bit bigger so we can work on it. And I'm going to double click into it because I actually want to use the volume envelope to be able to affect this. Now, what I want to do with this loop is I actually want to get rid of the open hat. So I only really want the closed hat. Now with this clip, we almost want to do the opposite of what we did with the clap. With the clap, we wanted to isolate that clap on its own and everything else be muted. But with this, we just want to mute the open hat. So we're almost doing the opposite. We want the rest of the clip to be 100% volume. So what we need to do is we just need to mute this open hat. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom right into this open hat within here. And rather than drawing those four different points that we did before, I'm going to show you an even quicker way of being able to isolate something. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw a selection over this open hat. I'm just adding a little bit either side of that open hat just to make sure that we're catching everything within it. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go up to that dash line at the top. I'm not going to get right on it just until it changes color like this. So my cursor is not actually on that line at the moment, but we can see it's changed color and I'm going to click and drag downwards. Now what this does is it actually creates a shelf. So what it's doing is it's creating a notch out of that envelope. So I can drag this all the way to the bottom so it gets to a 0% volume. And then when I let go of it, we can see that we now have our envelope. Okay, it's actually got those kind of rough edges on there, so it might actually cause some clipping. But what we can do now is actually pick one of those points and pull that in a little bit and pull this one in. And then what we're doing is we've got those slopes that we had before. So it's an even quicker way of being able to isolate that open hat. So you can try both ways. If you want to put those four points in manually, you can do, or you can do that method where you drag the line down and kind of almost make a shelf for the thing that you want to isolate. So we've now isolated that one individual open hat. So that's now out of that clip but we still have it in the rest of the clip. Now, what I could do is I could go through and do that to every single open hat for the rest of the clip, but I wanna be a bit smarter about this. Now, because this open hat is happening every single beat, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna select a beat within here. So I'm selecting the whole region of a beat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate. So I'm gonna hold down Apple D on my keyboard and I'm gonna duplicate this envelope. So I duplicate it once and we can see that's now isolated this open hat. So I'll duplicate it again and again and again and again, and again, until we get to the end of the clip and we've done them all. I'm just going to zoom out so we can see what it's actually doing. And there you go, you can see quite quickly that we've actually isolated every single one of those open hats and got rid of them from within here. So the only thing we've got within the clip now is the closed hat.
Now, obviously duplicating the envelope like this does save you a whole lot of time from actually putting in those envelope cuts for every single open hat. But what you might find is that you need to go into certain ones of those and maybe tweak them. Maybe the closed hat is too close to the open hat or whatever your sample has. Maybe you just need to tweak those envelopes a little bit, but at least saves you a whole lot of time from creating that kind of stuff manually for every single one. You might still need to go into each single one and kind of tweak it a little bit, but at least it saves you some time from doing it all manually. So let's close this down and see how it sounds with the rest of our beat. So both of those hi-hats have a slightly different swing to them and it does sound a little bit messy, but I kind of like that rough and readiness of it. And I've taken the volume right down of that closed hi-hat that I've just put in and it kind of just fills out some of the space quite nicely. And that's kind of generally how I build my beats. I kind of take these different elements of top loops and then kind of layer them up as you go along. Now, obviously that's super rough at the moment. I haven't done any EQing. I haven't really even balanced the volume levels all that well, but I wanted to show you how I start building my beats with top loops because that's what I do most often. And I find it so quick for getting a groove together. I'll jump between different sample packs, taking different elements of different top loops to kind of build my beats. So I'll go to one sample pack to find my hi-hats. I'll go to another one to find a clap. And then I might go to another one to find some percussion or some open hats or something else like that that gives me a bit of a groove. So I kind of combine all of those together to create this kind of hybrid. Now you could obviously use those top loops as they are, but I like to use them creatively. So I like to kind of chop them up and use different parts of them. And that's kind of what makes my beats my beats. I'm kind of using different bits from different kind of genres and different packs. And that's kind of what makes my sound. So if you're struggling to kind of use one shot hits and you're finding it hard to kind of build a groove or to find the right sounds, then try using those top loops. Try kind of cutting them up and seeing what you come up with because it can often be a very quick way of starting a track so definitely give it a try and see what you can come up with and if this video has been useful to you then definitely subscribe to my channel i've got a whole load more content like this on there tips tricks tutorials everything like that so definitely get subscribed hit that notification bell as well so you're notified as soon as i upload a brand new video and hopefully i'll see you again in the next one